Hello everyone, my name is Brian Seymour. I am the Director of Instructional Technology for Pickerington Local Schools. As you know, we're starting the one-to-one -one program at Pickerington Schools. We are going to be the largest school district in the state of Ohio to be completely one-to-one -one with all of our students. And what does that mean? That means that all 10,600 of our students are either going to have a device with them 24 seven during the school year, or they'll have access to one in the classrooms. So we have created this series of videos um, that we're calling our one-to-one -one video series uh, that we would like to, you to ask all parents to take a few minutes to watch. This will give you detailed information upon our one-to-one -one program. So our first um, video here, this one you're watching right now is the overview. Then we'll get into more details with the technology protection plan. The third video in the series, we'll talk about how teaching and learning will change over the course of the next few years. And then we'll get into some FAQs. So let's start with the overview. thing is back in 2015-16 we created this Pickering in Schools technology plan and the technology plan is available online on our website you can see the link down there at the bottom um, and uh, basically this this program or this this uh, plan uh, was crafted from seven different stakeholder groups we had teachers we had administrators we had community members uh, we had ed tech folks that were there and they all created this wonderful 120 some page document that is our master plan for all technology over the course of the next 10 years we really looked at this differently if you look at most schools technology plans it is really focused on the technology we flipped that and we are really focusing more on the teaching and learning and the change in pedagogy teaching practices and really looking more at a blended learning environment um, and how can technology help us get to that point. Our end all goal with this whole thing is personalized and individualized instruction so that way your student is getting what, they're ne what they need and the teachers are not just necessarily teaching the same way to all kids. This will take us a little while to get there. It's going to be a multi-step, multi-year process, but getting the devices and getting the technology in the hands of the students is the first step of this. We are working uh, with our teachers on changing pedagogy and how to appropriately teach with all this technology, and then also how to get to the idea of personalized and individualized instruction. The other thing that this plan allows us to do is gives us a roadmap for devices. It gives the administrators and the teachers and the parents as well too, an idea of what type of technology is happening and where this is going. So you can look in four years and this is what's gonna happen in this building, five years is what's gonna happen in this building and so on. The other thing is this also gives us evaluation metrics. So we're looking at how is the technology actually impacting instruction. We want to make sure with this large of an investment that it's truly making a difference and these evaluation metrics allow us to see those. You can check out all of this information there at pickerington.k12.oh.us backslash instructional technology. The entire plan is online. I encourage you to check it out. So the, the bulk of what we talked about or when we're talking about changing this plan is changing instruction, getting away from the teacher at the front of the classroom and moving more towards individualized instruction, utilizing the technology. So we've adopted a form of blended learning that we are calling tradigital learning. And what tradigital learning is, is it blends the best teaching practices from the traditional classroom with those of a digital classroom. So it really honors the good work that our teachers have done. Pickerington's always been a highly successful district. I've been in the district for 17 years. So I know the tradition that we have here in Pickerington. Um, so what we want to make sure is that our teachers continue some of those really impactful teaching practices, but we're also integrating some of the new technology pieces in there as well. Okay. Uh, we also want to make sure uh, that technology is never going to replace the teacher in our minds. All right. Technology is a new tool, um, just like, you know, back in the day when chalkboards came out. That was a new and innovative tool that came out, you know, 100 years ago. This is just another tool that allows our teachers to be more effective 
uh, and more efficient in the classroom. So let's talk a little bit about devices. The devices that the kids are going to get is going to be a combination of iPads and Chromebooks. And we really decided that we wanted to figure out the pedagogy first and then what device fits to meet that pedagogy. So we kind of did it be the back way of most people. Uh, most people said, this is the device we have. How do we teach with it? We wanted to say, this is how we want to teach. And now let's pick the device that works for that. So um, at our preschool through second grade, um, they are all getting um, iPads. Uh, they're getting the brand new iPads, which is the from 2017. Uh, they're getting the 32 gig um, iPads, uh, which will be in all of their buildings. Now, Sycamore Creek and Tollgate Elementary uh, currently have um, current iPads, the iPads we've had for a couple years. Uh, they are slated on, the, on the, the roadmap to get all brand new devices next year. All right. Um, once we get into third and fourth grade, they're going to have the Dell Chromebook, the model you see sitting here in front of us uh, on the screen. Um, those are going to stay in the building, though. Those will not go home with them. Once they get into fifth grade, now is when we're starting to talk about the device actually goes home with them. So we will be loaning out these devices to students. These are still district-owned devices. Um, and basically, the students will have these from when they pick them up here in August um, all the way through till about the last couple days of school. We will be collecting these um, at the end of the, the school year, uh, and then we'll get them back to them the following school year. Uh, 11th and 12th graders were not scheduled to have a device, but we figured out with a couple different ways to get a device in their hands. So 11th and 12th graders are going to be getting the iPad Air 1 that you see pictured there. Uh, they are 16 gigs, um, so they need to make sure that they're not putting a lot of video on there. They're not putting a lot of extra music on there because the school apps do come first. Um, and if we can't fit the school apps on there because of music or video, we'll ask the students to delete some music or some video. Uh, the Dell Chromebooks is, is a new model. Um, if you have a sixth or a seventh grader, uh, they got a, a, a device last year at the middle school. That is the older model. And this is the new model. Um, I like it a lot better. It's a little bit more durable. The rubber bumpers are a little bit more stable. The hinge is a little bit nicer. Uh, and the other thing is, is they also flip all the way around. Uh, so that you can actually use it as a tablet as well, too. So the Chromebook is not necessarily just a laptop. It's also a tablet. Uh, and these new Chromebooks are actually going to allow us to run Android apps as well, too. So we'll have a lot more uh, instructional tools to be able to be used. So what does a roadmap look like? This was our roadmap last year. So in 2016-17, last school year, Pickerington Elementary and Violet Elementary were our two pilot elementary schools. They went completely one-to-one -one with iPads. And then in fifth and sixth grade, we went completely one-to-one -one with the Dell Chromebooks. All right, so that was our kind of pilot year. Things went very well, we felt. Uh, so we decided to speed it up. And this year, we are now completely one-to-one. -one. Um, so Heritage Elementary, Fairfield Elementary, and Tucson Elementary are getting all brand new devices. We are also going back and fixing Pick Elementary and Violet Elementary, meaning that their third and fourth grade classrooms will also get new Chromebooks. Um, and then from there, um, the fifth graders are getting new Chromebooks, the eighth graders, the ninth graders, and the tenth graders are getting new Chromebooks. The sixth and seventh graders will get Chromebooks that they had last year. All right. And then the 11th and 12th graders uh, will get um, um, iPads, as we said. We also had the opportunity to get our staff uh, brand new MacBook Airs. Now, the eventual goal of this, and this year is kind of a little bit weird just because of how some things are in, in different grade levels, the eventual goal is, is that kids would get a Chromebook in fifth grade, they would have that Chromebook for four years, and then they would turn that in at the end of their eighth grade year, and then they would get a brand new Chromebook in their ninth grade year. All right, so basically we're, we're looking at a Chromebook to last for four years. They'll get the exact same Chromebook back every year. Um, and, uh, you know, after the 12th grade year, they turn it back in. And we're keeping it that there is absolutely no fee for the Chromebook. Uh, the Chromebook does not cost the parents anything at all. Um, we're taking care of that all through, you know, general funds that we're using through the school district, uh, just kind of redoing our technology money into a different way. So instead of shared carts and other things like that, we're looking at a model that looks like this. 
So the biggest thing that we need to ask the students for is ownership of their laptop. So reminder, these devices still belong to PLSD, but the student will have the same device for two to four years. All right, so really, you know, we, we need the kids to really take care of those devices. The biggest thing is we are not going to allow charging in the school at all. We are asking kids to charge at night. So we need kids to take the ownership of making sure that their Chromebook or their iPad is plugged in and charging because their schools unfortunately just do not have the infrastructure to be able to have cords all over the classrooms or there's not enough plugs for every kid to have their Chromebook charged in, uh, plugged in to be charged. All of these devices have between a 10 and a 12 hour battery life. We did this last year at the, at the middle schools. We had very little problems with the batteries, very little issues uh, with the kids charging. It's something that we just need to remind our kids probably the first two weeks of school just to make sure that those are completely charged and ready to go. What happens if a Chromebook isn't charged? Well, they're gonna end up getting the old traditional type of uh, an assignment, probably on paper and pencil, and they'll have to do uh, things that way. Or the teacher may even ask them, do it paper, pencil here, but then when you go home, please put it into Google Classroom. The other thing we'll talk about a little bit more later is the technology protection plan. This is kind of like a um, insurance type plan uh, that allows to be able to protect from um, accidental damage. We'll talk more about that in um, episode two or, or the second video of this series. We do want to let you know that all of the Chromebooks are 100% filtered all of the time. Uh, so what that means is that we have a program uh, that we have invested in that filters the Chromebooks um, that uh, you know, regardless of what Wi-Fi it hits. So if it's at school or if it's at home, it's being filtered against um, some of the inappropriate type things that we do not want kids to see or kids to have access to. Um, there are alerts that we do get sometimes. Um, if a student is looking up something inappropriate, we do know about that. Um, if students are looking up self-harm, um, suicide type things, anything like that, we also get alerts on that so that way we can intervene if there is some type of an issue. Um, if that's the case, we will deal directly with the student, the principal, and the parents uh, to make sure that we can get this problem or this issue solved uh, in, in the best way that we possibly can. Once again, it's, it's about the kids and making sure the kids are safe uh, regardless of where they go. Uh, the teachers will also have some types of software that will allow them to kind of look into the kids' Chromebooks. Um, it'll basically say what tab they're on and allow them to make sure that their kids are on task and that the kids are doing school-appropriate things uh, and they're not playing games or not being off-task while they're at school. The other thing that I want to remind parents and students of is that the PLSD acceptable use policy, which is basically the policy that governs how kids act on computers and devices and on the internet, uh, because these are PLSD devices, uh, that PLSD acceptable use policy is in place 24 seven. So even if you're at home and something comes up, that still is, is a policy that, that we can enforce. The other thing that we've we've asked with this technology plan is to reduce the amount of paper that we use. Um, if you've ever looked at school budgets or anything like that, paper is a huge chunk of, of the, the materials that we purchase. Um, so we're not allowing printing on either of the devices, Chromebooks or on iPads. Um, and our goal is, is to share these things digitally. Teachers will be able to give feedback through the computer, through Google Classroom, through Google Docs. Um, and, and in that term, we're going to be able to use less paper. We saw in the middle schools last year about a 45% reduction to 50% reduction in paper. Uh, so then that means that we can use that funds or those monies for something else um, to, to help with the idea with, with teaching and learning. So the other thing that, that comes up is anytime you get a device, let's talk about apps. Where are we at? Well, we will push out to both the iPads and the Chromebooks numerous um, apps that uh, we have uh, purchased, different types of software, textbooks, so on and so forth. So those will already come preloaded on the kids' Chromebooks. But we are allowing the kids, if they want, uh, to go to the Google Web Store and they can download apps. And you know what? If they want to download a game or two, I really have no problem with that. 
Um, just as a reminder, um, anything that is school related comes first. So if you fill up your hard drive or what have you, um, or you can't add anything else, then we need to start reducing some of those other apps. Um, we have blocked numerous apps um, that are on there. Um, so parents, um, I just ask for your, your help in this as well. If you see anything that you feel is inappropriate, please, by all means, give me a call, give the buildings a call. Love to have a conversation with you about what it, what you see in, um, that's out there. There's always new apps and just trying to keep up with those is, is difficult, but we do the best that we possibly can. And we're constantly looking and, and constantly, once again, making sure kids are safe online. For the iPads um, at, the, at the high school level, so for juniors and seniors, um, students may use their Apple ID uh, to download the school needed apps. So uh, if the kids do not have an Apple ID, uh, parents, we ask that you help them make one. Uh, there is a way that you can make an Apple ID without a credit card, uh, which is kind of the, the direction that I lean uh, for you. So that way you don't get a huge credit card bill with music or what have you. Um, but I would go ahead and make up a uh, Apple ID for them. Uh, so then that way they can download their apps that are needed. If you need help with that, by all means, we can help facilitate that as well. All right. One of the questions that kids always ask is, can I decorate the Chromebooks? And the answer is yes. They're more than welcome uh, to put stickers on the front of their Chromebook. Um, and, and here's a, this is actually my Chromebook. So you can see a whole bunch of different ed tech uh, companies and stuff that are on there. The couple things that we ask that they don't cover up is the Pickering and School logo. Uh, the asset tag number uh, that's down at the bottom. And then there's a little bar in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, and that upper bar is actually a light indicator that teachers can use for polling purposes or questions or what have you. We ask that please don't put anything on the bottom or anything on the sides because that's where the vents are at for the computer. And if those are covered up, then your computer may overheat and we're going to have some damage with that. Okay. Um, we also say if you want to purchase, you know, um, hard cases for these, or if you want to purchase uh, any type of bag or case, you're more than welcome to. We encourage you to. Uh, if you look on the handout that you were given during the Chromebook or iPad uh, handout, there is a, a website of a preferred vendor that we're using. Um, just an FYI, uh, we're just kind of offering that to parents. Uh, PLSD does not uh, profit anything from that. It's just a company that we use that is that's really good customer service that, that we recommend. Um, for the iPads, uh, the students are getting cases. They're kind of chunky cases. Um, if you want to purchase a new case for the iPad, you're more than welcome to. But please remember to hold on to that old case. That old case needs to come back at the end of the school year as well, too. Um, so cases, stickers, go for it. Um, I love to see some of the essay ideas and things that kids do with their Chromebooks. Uh, it was kind of exciting last year to see, see their the creativeness um, in there. So parents, if you have additional concerns about anything, please start with your building's main office, all right? They'll probably know some of the answers. If they don't know some of the answers, they'll then direct you or, or get your information, collect some information, and then one of the individuals on our staff will give you a call. It'll probably be the instructional technology coordinator um, who works directly with me, and then if they can't answer your question, then I'll be more than happy to have a conversation with you. But please start out with your, your, uh, your uh, building's main office, and we'll go from there. Um, so just a reminder, uh, we will be collecting these devices at the end of the school year. Um, we'll probably do that in one of the last couple of days. Um, I think we did it last year about five days before the end of the school year. Uh, so they will not be able to keep these over the summer. So thank you very much. That's it for the overview. And the next three videos are going to talk about the technology protection plan how teaching and learning is going to be different over the course of the next few years, and a few FAQs. Please join us in continuing the PLSD one-to-one -one video series. Thank you very much.